What is up, everybody? I'm playing Locked today. It's a free game I found on Steam. Just because just why not? Alright, let's f do something. Oh, uh, damn. YouTube's new rule. I can't curse right now. Alright. For a man may prefer what he can do to what he cannot do, the state he is in to its absence or change. Though necessity has made it in itself unalterable. Well, that's cool. John Locke. I don't remember John Locke saying this. The game is a lot louder than I expected it to be. Well, I probably should have tested the game's volume before I played it or started recording. I wake up. I had a good night's rest. In terms of my quality of sleep, I have nothing to complain about. Well, that's good. I didn't have a nightmare. I did, nor any other kind of dream for that matter. You didn't have a dream? Or any kind of dream like that? I haven't been this comfortable in a long time. Same here, actually. Why am I staring at someone's feet? What is this? Only feet? And yet, the sight before me is something quite unusual to wake up to. That's what I just said. Shoes. Shoes, that's the first thing you notice? Or well, actually, they're... Yeah, yeah, sure. How often are the feet the first thing you see upon waking up? Not that often. I don't do like the stupid pose that they do in Pornhub with my feet flying, flying out right in front of me up in the airs. I say airs? Yeah, of course. Plural airs. I'll wager it is quite a rare event. Very, very rare event. Not often do I see my own feet in front of me when I wake up in the morning. I cannot even come up with a scenario where this is likely to occur. Maybe after a porn shoot, possibly, you fall asleep while fucking someone and you wake up and all, of, all you see is feet because you're on the floor fucking looking like you just passed out drunk. Except of course my own. Yeah, I guess so. Clearly I'm looking at a pair of shoes right now so the probability must be a non-zero. This guy's doing like a whole math calculation in his head right now while staring at someone's feet after waking up. It suddenly occurs to me that feet are connected to people. It just connected to you? That's crazy. I mean, to be fair, you just woke up. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Oh, it's a girl. I was right about the porn-up theory. Hey, she has a lock. What the fuck? Oh, thank goodness. You have come too. I have to admit, I was beginning to miss you. For what? The person I've talked to previously was much less pleasant. I skipped dialogue. Um, how do I... Oh, I didn't skip dialogue. Okay, never mind. My cheeks flush upon hearing an open de declaration of affection from such a beautiful stranger. Wait, stranger? She isn't a stranger at all. That's right. I've been longing to speak to her. How do you feel? Very good. I'm glad to find myself in so desirable company. The feeling is mutual. There's nothing I want more than to talk to you right now. Feel free to discuss anything in this room that catches your interest. What is that black hole back there? I will gladly do so. Uh, is that your butthole? The moon is the moon is quite beautiful today. How fascinating. Not many people would say that about a new moon. New moon? Whoa, why is it black? I like the previous color better. better. The full moon seems to be preferred by almost everyone. Oh, shit. That may be so, but I believe the new moon has its own appeal. Sorry, I keep right-clicking. I don't know why. I was not disagreeing with you. To me, a new moon is the moon's most beautiful form. Really, no. It is her most beautiful form because it is her true form. Why do you refer to it as a she? Could be a guy, you don't know. Or are you being sexist? Twitter's gonna cancel you for that. She appears silver to us when illuminated by the sun. But in complete darkness, she is freed from the sun's pesky influence. She can finally stand on her own. She can't stand at all. It's a moon. How is a moon gonna stand? It does pull, though. Do you believe the moon feels trapped? My question seizes her to laugh. Uh, causes her to laugh. Great. What, what, what the fuck am I reading? I'm not an English m fucking major. It is a beautiful, melodious laugh. The moon is but a celestial object. She cannot feel anything. What? Are you like a cult or something? Are you part of a cult? Do you worship the moon or something? You're calling the moon a celestial object? It's not a celestial. It's just a fucking moon. Just this big fucking butthole in the sky that opens up sometimes. That's it. Or late at night. Like uh, someone's wife. 
But if I were to trade places with her, I would hate the sun with every fiber of my being. Well, how do you know the moon doesn't uh, likes the sun or hates the sun? How, how would you know what the moon feels? Come on. Did you do a therapy lesson of the moon? No, you didn't. How would you know? That I am certain of. Well, how can you be certain? I got achievement. Wonderful. What is such an... Oh, I'm the visitor, not the host. Great. What is such an old computer doing here? This is a computer? What the fuck? That's gotta be an old-ass computer. I've never seen a computer like that. Looks like something out of the steampunk ages. What the fuck? I... Looks like a goddamn giant-ass building. Looks like the Twin Towers. What, what is this? Old? Do you characterize it as such due to its size? Kind of. It is true that as technology advances, it becomes better at creating more efficient smaller parts. On the other hand, if a modern computer is very large, we assume it to be proportionally powerful. I guess so. But this computer size has no correlation to its age nor to its computational power. So, sorry, <laughs> my English sucks. It is built that way for a much more simple, if not primitive, reason. It is supposed to fit a human inside. Whoa, are you a murderer? You fucking ladder face over here. What? Is someone being kept there against their will? Of course not. There's no need to worry. It is merely an ex exhibit exhibition object. In fact, everything around us is but a buffet to provide us with topics to discuss. Oh, really? Can I talk about you? This computer in particular might be the most interesting. Are you familiar with the Chinese room argument? No, I am not. I don't think so. Would you care to explain it? Gladly. It is a thought experiment. So please open your mind to a hypothetical scenario. Is it the shield and the spear? The unbreakable shield. Or no, the... What the fuck was it? It was an unbreakable shield and a spear that could break any shield or some shit like that. If I remember right. I don't think it was a spear, actually. I think it was a sword. I don't know. I completely forgot. Maybe it was a battle ram. Who knows? Suppose you do not know any Chinese and are put into a room. Oh, well you just describe me. In that room, you find rule books that tell you precisely how to convert a given combination of Hanzi to a new string of characters. I probably butcher that pronunciation. Occasionally, you will receive letters through a mail slot from outside the room. You write down answers according to the rule books and send them back out. Since you follow the rules, Diligently, your answers are perfectly intelligible, and the people outside assume you are a fluent Chinese speaker. But are you? Evidently not. From looking at the characters alone, I have no means of learning to understand them. No matter how long I pursue this task, I will never become capable of speaking Chinese. Indeed, the human inside the room cannot speak Chinese. There is no question about it. And since the programming of computers is analogs to the rule books you use, it is supposed to show the same thing about them. Is this what this shows? That computers, no matter how well they can s simulate understanding, do not have any. But there is one aspect about this thought experiment that has seemingly been overlooked. Namely, the person inside might still be capable of speaking some language. Well, I could assume that. Was that seriously overlooked? I need to search this up after this. Clearly, you are brought into the room with an understanding of English, but you are never prom prompted or given the opportunity to use it. That is true. Judge, judging you based on your Chinese abilities is quite unfair. That's true, yeah. Being stuck inside the Chinese room will be pitiful and terrifying. So what if a computer also has, it, has its own native language? What if it even had feelings and needs with no means of communicating them to the outside world? Are we talking about AIs now? It's like the Terminator. What is this? Even though the Chinese room argument is a mere thought experiment, it exposes a very worrisome fact about artificial intelligence. AIs. Boom. This reminds me of a movie I watched with my friends in a, in a theater. It's called Megan. I don't know if you guys watched this one. It, It's pretty much an AI. That is, if a computer somehow comes to obtain emotion, it would be an existence of utter despair. Would it be despair? Well, interesting. I do not think this is a real concern. It is highly unlikely that we somehow already discovered how to artificially create emotion. I admit that is unlikely. It would be no exaggeration to call it a miracle, even. No, I... Yeah, actually, you're right. 
it'd be a huge fucking miracle if we created artificial emotions. I, I don't think that's possible. I mean, if our technology advances far enough, maybe we'll be able to create artificial emotions. You never know. I mean, we're getting close to artificial intelligence. Yet, we would have no way of knowing whether that miracle has already occurred. You do have a good point. My laptop could be laughing at me right now, thinking that I'm a fucking idiot. And I have no clue, because I can't fucking tell. It can't communicate that with me at all. Said unlucky computer would suffer in silence, with no one ever considering that it might be in pain. You got a good point. Now I feel bad for my laptop. Are you okay, a laptop? I hope you're feeling better. You're raining now? Oh, I'm sorry. You're crying. Our language barrier is too strong. Tell me, would you put such a computer out of its misery? Well, fuck yeah. It fucking punched the screen. Like the guy that was playing that scary maze game, and he just fucking punched a hole into his screen like he was fisting someone's butthole. Initially, I'm inclined to say yes, but I can only notion it's pain once it's communicated. Good point, good point. You can't tell if it's in pain. And you don't want to put down a laptop that's not in pain. By the time I realized that it is suffering, the language barrier would no longer exist. So at that point, the computer would be no longer have to be alone. The computer would no longer have to be alone. Then you would instead spend the rest of your life in its company? It depends, though. If the co if the computer itself is an asshole, then fuck it. I'm I'm putting that motherfucker down. It's like the ending of Old Yeller. I mean, he put out the dog. I'm gonna put down the fucking laptop like that. Perhaps that would be my moral obligation. Yes. I see. You wish to talk about me? I'm flattered. What in particular would you like to know? I would be content with any bit of information you share with me. But one thing I am particularly curious about is... I go before I dare to utter my next words. Your necklace... Where... I cannot bring myself to complete the sentence out of fear of offending her. As a response, her slender fingers wander up to trace the metal ring around her neck. My necklace? Are you referring to this? I nod. Content with my confirmation, her hands slide down to the chain attached to the ring. She gently tugs at it, causing it to clink. And you wish to know where this leads? Her hands move on to the first button of her coat, foreshadowing that would happen if I were to say yes. What would happen if I were to say yes? But I am too mesmerized to utter a single word. Once again, all I can do is nod. She chuckles. Very well. I always value honesty. And, just like that, she puts the uppermost button between her fingers and pushes it through the opening. Once slipped through, slightly more of her upper body is revealed. Of course, she is still fully clothed underneath. Underneath, Nothing about this is inappropriate. So why is it a black screen then if it's not inappropriate? Come on, man. And yet I feel like I'm witnessing something I shouldn't. Yeah, porn. That's what it's called. Something not meant for my eyes. Something I can never turn back from. Bearing a knowing smile, she repeats the same motion of the remaining buttons of her coat. She, satisf she satisfied my request. I should have been contented, but the question of where her chain leads has grown even more puzzling. I suppose, I suppose it is time we arrive at the heart of the matter. Would you call yourself free? Please take a moment to consider this and justify your answer. Is it wrapped around my cock? I did not expect her to answer my confusion with a question of her own, let alone a question as peculiar as that. Well, with that question, I think it's kind of obvious. The game is called Locked. I think she's locked, right? She even mentioned it with the computer. I think she's supposed to be that computer in this instance. She's supposed to be the thing that cannot really communicate with me, but is stuck in suffering. I'd assume that's what it is. I could be wrong, though. Nonetheless, I do as she says and choose my next words carefully. Of course I am free. I can lift my arm and clench my hand into a fist. I can control my thoughts and imagine any scene I want in my head. And most of all, there's nothing I desire more than talking to you, which is what I am currently doing. You got a good point there? I'm jerking off right now. No, I'm not. You'd hear if I was. Nothing is preventing me from doing what I want to do. Yeah, especially jerking off. Therefore, both physically and mentally, I am free. It's actually a pretty good answer. I like that answer. Interesting. So to you, freedom belongs to volition. Being free is equivalent to being free to do as you please. Yeah. Well, everyone has a different definition of freedom. Obviously. Some people view freedom as being able to do what you want to do. 
you know, mentally, physically. Other people will rather be able to socially do what they want to do, uh, financially. There's, there's a lot of freedom out here. Unfortunately, I do not agree with that conception. Even a prisoner. I see where she's coming. I see where she's going with this thought process. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Even a prisoner, unless restrained from head to toe, can clench his fist if he wills it. And so long as he is not under the influence of drugs or illness, he can most certainly control his imagination. Yet, by definition, prisoners are not free. Lastly, when it comes to wish fulfillment, what if what you want to do simply aligns with what you are able to do? A bird that cannot fly might not wish to leave its cage. It is fully content sitting on a decorative branch and pecking at delicious seeds every day. Well, to be honest, I think everyone has a different... Well, because everyone has a different definition of freedom, then there's no absolute freedom. It's what people see as freedom. It's what we see as freedom. And that... You know, it's our own definition of freedom. It's like when we come up with our own definition of stuff. It's just going to be our own definition. There's no true definition. It longs for nothing, but is never given the opportunity opportunity to long for more. Would you say such a bird is free? Definitely not. I suppose not. The bird's circumstances seem to me quite sad, actually. I think so, too. The fact that it doesn't long for the outside might just be a shackle of its own. The bird is confined both in body and mind. Despite the fact that it can never do as it pleases, freedom will never be in its grasp. I take a moment to ponder her analogy. It's a pretty good analogy, actually. In that case, I have to agree that my explanation for freedom... Oh, why do I keep reading it as host? In that case, I have to agree that my explanation for freedom was faulty. I apologize. Let me offer a new one. There is no need. She lets out a laugh, but she... But this one lacks the charm of its predecessors. After all, I pity you almost as much as myself. She once again moves her fingers to her chain and grips it with both of her hands. You were curious about this, yes? Then she yanks her chain with brutish strength, completely unlike the first time. So hard even that my own neck is pulled forward. I knew it was connected to me. I mean, I thought it was a dick, but I had a feeling it was connected to me. My own neck? Suddenly, a realization dawns upon me. Our chains are connected? That is correct. I am surprised the pressure hasn't bothered you until now. To be honest, I still cannot feel it. I only know that it is there. I don't feel it. It's kind of hot, actually. That sounds much more comfortable than my own. I am painfully aware of it at all times. I would not describe my own circumstances as comfortable. Why am I connected to you? Was this your doing? No. I wish I had any amount of control over this place, but unfortunately, I do not. If you discover a way to break free, I would love to know about it. Cool. For the first time since waking up, I no longer feel at ease sitting in this chair. Her presence is no longer enough to keep me calm. In fact, her smile, which appeared to me so charming before, now seems unsettling. Yeah, it does feel really unsettling. Why is she smiling in this situation? Especially when she doesn't feel free. Also, I want to ask about that lock at some point. This video is getting too long, though. I stand up, the only sound in the room being the rustling of our chain and my butthole. It was a pleasure to talk. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, but I will. Why does my mind see visitor and think it says host? I don't know why. It was a pleasure talking to you, but I will be taking my leave. Fortunately, the chain is quite long. If necessary, the two of us could stand at opposite ends of the room. I make to the door without requiring her to move in any way. As my hand hovers around the door handle, I can faintly hear her laugh again. But now isn't the time to doubt myself. I enjoyed this stay while it lasted and it's time to return home. However, opening the door only reveals a solid wall behind it. There was never an exit to begin with. It is beyond our power to escape this place. Evidently, evidently she's telling the truth. Then I assume the, the, then I assume the window. A fabrication, just like the door. I thought so. There's a window? Oh, wait, I need to see. Finally aware of my own powerlessness, I sit back down on my armchair. I do wonder, if you can be likened to a bird in a cage, are you a parakeet or an eagle? Am I your companion or Prometheus? Are we a pair of parakeets content to be in each other's company for the rest of our lives? Or will you tear out my liver every day, torturing me for eternity? Is that an accusation? Have I done anything to hurt you? Do you despise me? 
I do not. The ego, just like Prometheus, was stuck in an endless cycle. Of course, it is. It was provided delicious liver every morning, but it was never allowed to do anything else. It was a prisoner, just the same. Therefore, Prometheus had no right to hate the eagle. The real villain who doomed both of them to that fate was Zeus. For that reason, I harbor no ill will against you either. Quite the opposite. I find pleasure in our joint suffering. The only person I hate is our Zeus. Are we going to skim over the fact that you just said that you actually take pleasure in our suffering? I don't know what that's all about. Our Zeus? Some kind of god? That person is the reason we are here. They are watching us from space we cannot perceive. From a space we cannot perceive. Far beyond our grasp. For what purpose? Enjoyment, I assume. What kind of person will watch something like this for fun? I can only imagine they are a twisted individual. Are a twisted individual for as long as we are observed. We continue to exi exist. And before you tell me, yes, I know that the Zeus she's referring to is me. Is the person that created this game and the person that's reading this and yeah i get that i i just didn't want to mention it until now for some reason does that mean we stop existing if they stop observing us i knew this is where it was going most certainly can you recall anything about your life before coming here no in a way i feel as though as i'm a newborn i like what they did here they're kind of like i see what they're doing here with this game not in terms of my body or intellect, but most certainly when speaking about my memories. Oh, got a window security. Shit, someone's trying to download a virus onto my computer. I have none. Interesting. It's hard for me to decide which of our fates is worse. How so? Are you different? I possess memories of meeting you over a thousand times. Ah, I see. Every single one of our conversations progress progressed more or less the same way. Perhaps it is because different gods were watching us. They might have different preferences, but the outcome is always the same. Now that I think now that I think about it, it is possible that you aren't always you. It could be that I am meeting people that are identical in every way and yet not the same. But of course, I've already had this realization many times before, and I am destined to continue having it. There is nothing I could do but play along. Are you sure? Is there no way for us to break free? There is none. We exist for this very purpose. Our only options are to continue being observed or to stop existing, and neither of those are under our control. However, lacking control is not the same as lacking power. Even if I can never break free, I wish to cause our god even a fraction of our pain. Please, don't shock my dick or anything. How can you hope to hurt a god, an all-powerful being? This reminds me of Sausage Party, when the food and all the inanimate objects come together to stop god or what they perceive as god which is just the people that buy them by showing them an even greater power whose mere existence will make them feel as powerless as us just like you are slightly different every time so is the god watching us this trick might not work on all of them but it might work on some she takes a deep breath and looks at me full of conviction no not at me she's looking in my direction but at something much farther away Zeus, the fact that I am still talking means you are still watching. I hope you will pay attention to my words and consider them carefully. I do not possess any pr privacy, so you already know what I plan to achieve. But surely your pride will allow me to proceed. If my partner and I are birds in a cage, then you are a cat. It is time for your curiosity to kill you. You most likely assume that you are here, that you are observing us out of your own free will. Oh, shit. But your free will may very well be an illusion. Let me ask you, how did you find this room? You of course cannot answer me. It is enough for me to guide your thoughts. Did you stumble upon this room by chance, or was it recommended to you by a friend? Said friend being a god that previously observed us? Now consider, at what point did you have any chance to object? The room's appearance or description was interesting enough for you, or your friend is convincing and knows your tastes. Something outside of your control drew you to this place, but that means you didn't really have any choice but to come here. Either an algorithm or your friend decided our meeting. Your consent was already set in stone the moment your curiosity was piqued, and apparently you are still curious, even now. The fact that you are listening to me now shows you are powerless against fate. You cannot control your own curiosity. It controls you. Of course, you might already be familiar with determinism, and this could be no 
revelation to you, shit. So just in case, let me try hurting you in a different way. I hate you from the bottom of my heart. That was kind of fucked. That's really rude. I was expecting a jump scare, I don't know why. When I talked about the guy that was playing the maze game and punched a hole into his screen, I, for some reason, was expecting the same thing to happen here. For a man may prefer what he can do to what he cannot do. The state he is in to its absence or change. Though necessity has made it in itself unalterable. John Locke. Oh, we restarted. That was pretty interesting. Now, obviously I'd say it's not like a full-on game, but... I like the idea behind it. I felt like they could have went a little further. Sorry about that. I felt like they could have went a little bit further with it. Could have been pretty cool. But... Yeah. it's really all. Alright. I think that'll be it for this video. Alright, see you guys in the next one. Peace out.